Okay, so, ooh, wrong way. Ha. Hey guys, I hope everything is going well. I thought I'd just say hey. Um, we are doing uh, 5.2 today. And with this one, I'm just going to toss it out here. Um, it's going to take a lot of practice probably to get really comfortable with these. Also, you need to show every step. Part of verifying is showing every single step. So your, your assignment is going to have a lot of work on it. Um, the book does not actually have these answers. It just says answers will vary. So I will post what I did um, online. If you do it a different way and you still verify it, you're good to go. There's many different ways to do it and I'm just showing you one way, okay? So here we go. Get those situated. Okay, so we are on chapter 5.2, verify. Okay, 5.2, verify. So um, again, you should have your handy dandy formula sheet. Okay, if you don't have that one yet, print it out. If you don't have a printer, stop by the school anytime between 9 and 11 and they're in the front office ready for you guys to pick up. Okay, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, what you're going to do is they'll give you a problem, obviously, <laughs> and you're going to have, so let's say we have secant y cosine y equals 1. In order to verify it, we need to get 1 equals 1, or cosine y secant y equals 1. That is pretty much simplified, so we always go to what the most complicated side is and try to make it not so complicated. Um, so secant. Um, secant we know is 1 over cosine y times cosine y over 1 equals 1. So cosine y over cosine y equals 1. 1 equals 1. And that would be verified. I would need to see those steps. Maybe you could fudge it and not do this one. But more you show the better. Again this is verifying. This is actually the assignment is to show this show that mathematically this works, okay? Um, if you notice on your assignment, it will have things that say um, verify by graphing or using your calculator and your table of numbers. Um, that just means if you put in y1 secant, and let's say x cosine x, then y2 you did the equation 1, these two graphs would look the same, okay? So you can look at the graphs and they would be the same. Or you can look at your table and your outputs would all be the same. So if it asks you to do that, um, you could go ahead and check it, but this is what I need to see. Okay? Sometimes it's just nice to check it if you're going through it a lot of times and it's just not working and you're going like, does it even exist? You could always verify it. Okay? Um, let's do another one. Okay, a little bit more complex. They're going to be this easy. They're going to be a little bit not so easy. So our next one is cotangent squared beta plus cosecant squared beta equals 2 cosecant squared beta minus 1. Oops, minus 1. Ooh, that red is not easy to see. Okay, that's better. Sorry, making this video all long. Probably split this up into a couple videos. Okay, so both sides of this look pretty complicated to me. Um, yeah, so let's see what we have. All these squares and that one make me want to look at my uh, Pythagorean identities on my page. Um, let's see. I know cotangent 1 plus cotangent squared theta is cosecant squared theta. So what if I took and added this one over? Okay. Um, some people say if you're verifying you can't mess with the either side. You have to stay on one side of the equal sign. Um, you know what? Let's do that. You can. I'm good if you move it back and forth across. I would try to do it on just the left side or right side first. If that's not working, move it around until it works okay but I'm going to take this idea that and I'm just going to write it it's 1 plus cotangent squared theta 
equals cosecant squared theta. I'm going to take that idea and say cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus 1. So I'm going to take this and I am going to substitute it in. Okay. So I'd get cosecant squared theta minus 1 plus cosecant squared, oops, beta, stick with the beta, equals 2 cosecant squared beta minus 1. Well, that actually worked out really nice. Because if I add those two together, they're like terms. We get 2 cosecant squared beta minus 1 equals 2 cosecant squared beta minus 1. And that works. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop this video. I try to keep them about 5, between 5 and 10 minutes. I'm going to stop this video, clean up my table, and go to the next ones, okay?